Okay, um, so we are now going to turn to our week four of ACE and what we're really going to do is focus on the guided self assessment. So I wanted to um, point out two things about that before Martha pulls it up on the screen and just talks about it for a minute. Um, the first thing is that the way the guided self assessment will work is a little different if you're stipended versus non stipended. So for people who are stipended and in mentor groups, um, the expectation is that the way that you sort of get paid for ACE, um, your deliverable, is this guided self-assessment. So it doesn't have to be even well done, but it does need to be done. Um, and what will happen is that you will make an appointment for about a half an hour with your mentor um, sometime this week or next week. And in that mentor meeting, you will um, need to finish your guided self-assessment before that. And then you and your mentor will talk through uh, this GSA, which I always think is Gay Straight Alliance, but it's not, it's guided self-assessment. You'll talk through the GSA, um, and then your mentor will let the collab know that you have completed it, and that's when we will put uh, in for processing your stipend. Um, the mentor is not going to report your grade or anything like that to anybody, um, including the collab. Um, what they might do is if you mention to your mentor that you have real gaps um, and you want some help with those gaps, uh, your mentor is somebody who can help bring some of that information back to me and Martha and Hannah, um, because we do want to make sure that any gaps that you have, we cover in the next couple of weeks before school starts. Um, so you can consider your conversation with a mentor as a first step to getting help with the remaining things that you need in your guided self-assessment. For those of you who are not stipended, first of all, you know, at any point, you know, you can do or not do whatever you want. We all have, you know, that kind of agency. But assuming you want to complete ACE, um, you will go through and do your guided self-assessment. And then what we suggest, because we don't have time to uh, use our mentor um, infrastructure to go through those with you, we suggest that folks who are in that peer-to-peer um, -peer group without assigned mentors, just partner up, um, go on there and ask for a partner or if there's somebody that you know in ACE who you'd like to partner with. Um, I would suggest just groups of two because that's gonna keep it nice and easy for you. And then all you need to do is um, exchange. You remember, you don't even need to exchange because they will be in your, in your folder. View each other's guided self-assessments and then get together for an hour and talk through each one. Um, you can still contact the collab if you have questions or concerns. Um, I wanted, the other thing I wanted to say is that we are expecting for people who complete the GSAs to try to annotate each thing, but it's fine to just be like, yeah, okay. You know, that, that's an annotation, like done, I got it, I know. <laughs> um, but for places, especially where you have gaps or you wanna remind yourself of something, please write in some notes there. But I just wanna suggest this is not a time to write a little novel unless you like that kind of thing um, in each section, right? We're, we're not aiming to increase your workload. A big chunk of this work this week is really to focus on um, your syllabus and the sense of how you're going to offer your course. So don't let annotating the checklist get in the way of the course design work that you need to focus on. That's what's really important. So you and your mentor will be able to look at the GSA, and a piece of that includes sort of pasting in your syllabus as best you can. Any question that you have about, oh, but Robin, is this okay? Or I'm gonna do it this way instead, or I can, the answer is always yes. Like modify this assignment however you need to, to make it useful for you. Um, Martha's gonna walk you through the GSA now, and I also wanna make sure you know how to access that in Teams. If you have still questions about using files and finding your guided self-assessment um, and using it, we can always send you a Word document by, by email so you can use it more off of Teams if that's easier for you. So I will turn it over um, to Martha to look at the GSA. I'm gonna unmute first and I'm going to share um, my desktop this time because I actually want to start in the browser um, and sh and walk through the week because the way that we structured this is um, the guided self assessment has several parts and we've divvied up different parts on different days so it's a totally different 
week than you've been doing the last three weeks. But if you follow along with this by Friday, you'll have it all done. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't work ahead if you get something done or depending on your own schedule or time, but I do want to at least um, give you a sense of how this is all supposed to unfold. So today is Monday. This is what we're doing right now. Um, you're in the weekly orientation. Um, what you're, the first step of the guided self-assessment, and I'm going to show you that in a moment, is you should all have received, and I am hearing from some people they did not receive this, and if you didn't, just let me know and I'll send it again. Um, an email last night that contained the answers to um, several of the questions you responded to for the intake questionnaire for this workshop, which was only three weeks ago, even though it feels like a lifetime ago that you filled out that questionnaire. Um, you may be surprised by what you wrote because it feels so long ago. Um, but we're sending those back to you and we're asking you to reflect a little bit about what you wrote and how you feel today about some of those issues based on what you've learned the last three weeks and the conversations you've been a part of. So you'll review and then reflect in your GSA. Um, Tuesday, um, we ask you to go back and revisit the four models for high flex course design. Um, you did some thinking about this in week one. This is an opportunity to really bring all of that to fruition and put in short writing. It doesn't have to be a novel, as Robin said, your plan together for your course model design. Um, on Wednesday, that's, we give you Wednesday to work on your syllabus. Um, that's a, day, a syllabus day. Probably you already have some draft of this that you've been working on. This is a day to really focus on it, review some of um, Matt Cheney's resources about cruelty-free syllab syllabi um, and work on your syllabus and um, either share it in the GSA, which could get a little unwieldy or, or link to it from the GSA so that your mentor or whoever you're working with could, could look at your syllabus. Um, and then Thursday is the checklist that Robin mentioned, the entire checklist, weeks one, two, three, and there's a couple little things from week four has been put into the guided self-assessment document. And it's in a table where you can review the items and then annotate them um, based on where you are, what you've completed, what you still need to work on, what you don't think you need to deal with because maybe the item isn't appropriate for you and your courses. And then um, Friday is an opportunity to come back to, the, to teams and talk about whatever you want to, to mark the end of this workshop experience. But the really important thing here is sometime probably between Thursday and next Wednesday, August 12th, 12th to set up a 30 minute meeting with your mentor to go over your GSA together. Now, if you finish, if you decide to knock this out in the next day or two and you wanna try and set up that meeting sooner, contact your mentor, see what you can work. But the goal really is just to have those completed by next Wednesday, um, which is a deadline for reasons that I don't entirely know, but Robin and Kathy do, and I'm sure they could tell us why. Um, so that's the plan for the week. And now I'm going to jump into Teams and just show you the GSA document. So under your general tab, you're gonna go into files and just like always, well, just like you did a few weeks ago, some of you probably haven't been, have just downloaded instead of been working in here um, the last few weeks, you're gonna find your folder. I'm not gonna pick on anybody. I'm gonna to go to our very special participant 01 folder. Um, they haven't done anything. I looked at their participant workbook last night and 01 participant has been completely blowing off this workshop. There's nothing in it. Um, the guide itself assessment though is here. And just like with the workbook, you can work on it here or you can download it. Um, this is my favorite thing to do is open it in the desktop app that will open it in Word on your computer. When you save it, it will save it back to that file section so that it's always updated. But if even that's a little bit much, just go ahead and download it, work on it offline and share it with your mentor when you're done. So you'll put your name, your mentor's name, what, when you're meeting, whenever you schedule that. Um, these are your responses to the in intake questionnaire, a space to talk about your course design, um, a little space for a syllabus, just a little space there. But like I said, you may just want to share a link to the syllabus that you're working on and I'll show you how you can do that in a moment. Um, and then finally, this is the ACE workshop checklist, which is where you would um, make your notes about all the things that are in the checklist 
But again, you do not need, this does not need to be um, super lengthy. This is for you. So what's in here ne just needs to make sense to you and um, allow you to be able to talk about it with your mentor. Um, as Robin has said, and we've emphasized again and again, the point of this workshop is to prepare you for what you need to be prepared for. Don't waste time on things that seem unhelpful. Spend your time on the things that will be meaningful for you and your courses and your students. So that's the GSA document. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and close this because I just wanna show you when you're here in your folder, if you were to be working on your syllabus, you could come in and upload that to this very same folder. Um, so if you're working on that in Word, um, you could upload that. If, you, if you're somebody who's designing your syllabus on a website, you could just paste the link of that into your GSA for your mentor. But if, you, if it's a document itself, you would just upload it here. And then I'll just go into the participant workbook to tell you how you would grab a link to share that with somebody. Um, Teams doesn't make this as easy as I wish. You can't get that link from here in Teams. What you have to do is um, click on these three dots and open it in your browser, um, which opens it in kind of Office 365 in SharePoint. So this is yet another way to edit these documents. You can edit it in Teams, you can edit them in Word on your desktop, or you can edit them here in your browser. It's just taking a moment to load. Um, and when it is done, let me just move my little, um, you'll see there's a button here that says share. Um, and if you click on that, it will give you a share link. If you've ever used Google Docs before, it's similar to what you get um, there. Now, by default, it allows anybody to edit that document. Um, if you want to change that, just come over here and unclick allow editing. Um, just if you don't want anything to get changed accidentally. Um, and then come back here and copy a, this link. And then you would go back to your um, guided self-assessment and paste that in the syllabus section. So I hope that makes sense. If anybody is confused by that or needs help, just reach out to us in the collab. We're happy to walk you through it one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And with that, I'm going to stop sharing. And I think the important thing to realize about these GSAs um, is that despite all of that, they're just Word documents. So if you're like, I don't understand this, that, the other, just chat with us. We will send you over the Word document. You will work on the Word document. You can email it to your mentor, right? There's always a workaround if you're having trouble with that Teams files interface, but that's basically what it is. It's just a Word document. Again, I would say, depending on how you think about your syllabus, which, you know, as Liz pointed out, the word syllabus is, you know, not go, doesn't mean the same thing to everybody in terms of what might be in that document. But really we wanna to get to a place where you feel like you have your course designed. So focus on that and the checklist is designed and the GSA is designed to help you make a better syllabus, to help you make a better course, right? Um, so the key is to stay focused on your course design and use that checklist to prompt you to say, hey, I said I care about equity. Did I really tell my students that in the way I designed the course? Did I really bake that in to all of the ways that I'm setting this up? Um, so if you do nothing else, especially those who are not stipended, you might just really sit with that GSA document, burn it into your head, then throw it in the trash and work on your course, right? Um, it's a guiding document to help you build a course that bakes in adaptability, connection, and equity. Uh, we have about 10 minutes left, and of course, Martha and Hannah and I will stay past that as well to answer individual questions. Um, but we will stop recording and I will let folks um, leave. And if you want, you can also just stay and ask questions. So with that, Martha will cease the recording. <laughs>